put out that the sun shines down its power to all the world and makes the wind blow strong as it will. I want to hope gentle rains can fall upon the land so lovely earth can stay lovely still. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 403rd edition of Energy Week. Today is uh, the 28th of January, 2021, and we are reporting on news starting a week ago today, which is the 21st of January. And um, I should tell everybody that we need to get donations. Um, as far as I know, we've only had one, which tells you, you know, that either a lot of people watch this show and don't donate or nobody watches it. <laughs> what do you think, Tom? Do you have a, an answer to that? Well, I think people watch it. I mean, we've got evidence <laughs> that people watch it. We, yeah. we, the English, we need right? the donations. So we're asking people to go to Brattleboro TV.org. And uh, when you get to get to that place, you can go to the upper right hand area of the screen it's not exactly in the corner it's a little to the left of that there's an orange button that says donate and if you click on that you'll have an opportunity to tell them how and tell them how much and below how much a little ways down you can see a box that you, you can leave a comment in leave a comment that says that the seventeen thousand dollars you're putting in is for energy week. We need about, I don't know, three hundred and eighty dollars or something, but it's it's I'll uh, take the seventeen thousand. I'll yeah. <laughs> and and Tom and I promise if you give seventeen thousand, we will not use it for ourselves. It'll go to BCTV, which by the way is tax dedu tax deductible. I should also mention that these um, items that we're using we're talking about in the news come from uh, my blog, geoharvey.com, G-E-O-H-A-R-V-E-Y.com. You can go there and click on the calendar of the date of the item that we're talking about to uh, find the item and and look it up so you can actually read the, the account that, w that we talk about. Well, I'm glad you said that because some of these are well worth reading. Absolutely. They are. Also, there's different ways that are associated with the, with the program when it goes up online. You can download um, the thing I call a script, which is what Tom and I work from. Um, you can also, and that has the links, or, um, or um, or you, yeah. There's a there's a link to that, and, and you can download it. Two different things you can do. So and we I, should, I utilize the links. So by the time we get to the show, yeah, we know that the links are working. Yes. <laughs> We, either that or Tom tells me on the show that the link isn't working. Anyway, here is our first picture. And that is a picture Who's of that Joe, guy. I think that's Joe Biden, who is, by the way, president of the United States now. Don't, and, don't tell Trump that. <laughs> anyway, this is a uh, a uh, uh, an item that I found on the BB, BBC website. And it... Um, well, I'll, Tom, read the, the title, and I'll read the synopsis. Then I have a few other comments. Well, the picture says he's taken the oath of office, as it looks like. And, it, yep. and the title says, Biden's first act sets the tone for an ambitious approach. Yep. Um, make no mistake, returning to the Paris Climate Agreement was not mere symbolism. It is an act cloaked in powerful political significance, while rejoining involves simply writing a letter and waiting 30 days, there should there could be no more profound signal of intention from this incoming administration. And, you know, within within not many within less than two days of the time this happened, there started being changes around the uh, around the world in the way people were. Uh, were dealing with climate change because they knew that the United States was on board. And I want to mention, we this don't have this. On, what's that? This is very significant. It is. Um, we don't have it in this week's show. We will have it in, in next week's show. It happened last night. Uh, Joe Biden signed two executive orders and one memorandum, which are going to be really big. 
Um, and you can bet they're going to be challenged in court and all kinds of things are going to happen. But basically, he's got a whole agenda that he he unveiled um, in these in these two orders and memorandum. The memorandum says that we have to base our decision making on science, which, you know, <laughs> we, will, we will be touching base on this before the show is out. Yes, I know. But, you know, it, it was uh, it was a it was a powerful message that was made last night and i we will get back to it so you have stuff on this tom yeah uh let's see in a carefully cal well I'll, I'll be reading this in a carefully calculated message to the oil industry he also canceled the keystone xl pipeline permit yes and trump has done his utmost to remove what he perceived as unnecessary barriers and red tape to the freedoms of industry and commerce yeah. experts believe biden will do his utmost to rescind these rollbacks yes there's some other things that are going on that that um, you know biden has been talking about a um, buildup of renewables and switching to renewable energy producing a lot of jobs and saying saving a lot of money so well, he's, you know you've heard me say it before it's the economics stupid that's right it's the economics or is the is the oil industry going to prosper or is everybody else going to prosper and well, it's interesting uh, that not all of the oil industry is uh, fighting this um, as yes we, as we will talk about later i guess is british petroleum is well, getting on board Yes, that's right. And that's all very important. So is there more, Tom? Or I don't we... think so. I think, uh, well, a quick one he is committed. Biden has committed to 100 percent clean electricity by 2035. Yes. Yes. OK, we have a picture of batteries here. These are store dot batteries. I'd never heard of store dot before. This is an article from Clean Technica. Well, StoreDot and Penn State announced batteries that recharge in under 10 minutes. <laughs> well, that's significant. I guess it is. StoreDot. By the way, these are two different companies that are working independently of each other. StoreDot, an Israeli company, says it has batteries that will take a vehicle up to 250 miles on a recharge that's just five minutes. And the researchers at Penn State University say they have found a key to fast charging lithium ferrous phosphate batteries in just 10 minutes. Uh, so, you know, we've got these two technologies both being developed. There are two of hundreds of technologies that are under development. But the, in this particular case, they both are claiming success pretty much the same day. Well, you know, there's people all over the world working in their garages and back rooms that we never even hear about. Yes. And some of these people are going to hit on some real good thing. There's no question about it. It it does happen. So do you have more on that, Tom? Uh, it's just a little bit too technical. I don't let's pass. OK, on. let's go. Let's go ahead. Our next item is a uh, is an article from uh, WETM, which is, I believe, a television station, might be radio. I, I don't know how the call signal thing works. And we have a picture of Letitia James. That we do. We do. <laughs> New York wins a lawsuit against the EPA over clean energy. Yeah. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia ruled to vacate the Trump administration's affordable clean energy rule. This is a big deal. Absolutely. The New York Attorney General Letitia James, who is pictured, I would not want to get into an argument with that woman, um, <laughs> uh, led, led a coalition against the ACE rule, which is Trump's attempt to replace Obama's, the Obama administration clean power uh, plan. She looks like she is tough and intelligent. So. Uh, as you already said, I wouldn't want to get in a fight with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, 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 there's a quick takeaway here. The clean power plan puts limits on coal and other fossil fuel power plants. Yeah. That's significant. Yes. And the affordable clean energy rule meant that y there was no price you could pay for clean energy because it just wasn't going to exist. <laughs> that's not I, that's not really true. But it it was a plan that was intended to to 
provide for the continuation of profitability for the fossil fuels industry. Any more well, on that? You don't Tom? expect them to give up without a fight, do you? No, I don't think so. But as I said, I don't think I'd want to get into an argument with this woman. And she looks also to me like she's a lot more intelligent than some people out there. Okay. You know, I'm happy she's on our side. <laughs> yes, yeah, so am I. Okay, so we have a picture here of a cruise vehicle. And that's a brand name, by the way. Cruise. That's a brand's name. And I think we've seen that picture before. This is from Clean Technica. That's an autonomous vehicle. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And as it says, and I will quote, in a bid to lead autonomous driving revolution, Microsoft invests $2 billion in Cruise. <clears throat> this is $2 billion, you know. Um, Oh, well, I with mean, a, hey. you know, it's not with the with the nature of transportation changing. Microsoft is cozying up to GM to become its cloud computing partner of choice. In fact, Microsoft is kicking two billion dollars into the pot to support the work in autonomous driving that the company is doing. Now, for those who don't know, and I, my guess is that a lot most people do, autonomous driving means the vehicle drives itself. There is no human no driver. driver. And the tests that have That's happened so too. far, huh? That's inevitable too. Across well, the yeah. The the thing about autonomous driving is that. Uh, when it's tested, it's found to be much safer Bingo. than, well, you know, here I am driving down the road. Now that I don't drive anymore and I haven't driven for years, but, but, you know, here I am driving down the road. I start nodding off. What do I do? Well, I'm too sleepy to pull over and go to sleep. You know, I just, <laughs> this is, this is, um, human beings are not really very good drivers, I think. Well, Autonomous driver driving takes into effect more inputs than a human brain can handle. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it really is. And, you know, it's not perfect. And it but it's the tests that they've done indicate that it's already getting significantly better than uh, than human beings. So well, Cruise, it turns out, is a startup owned by General Motors. OK. And the takeaway here is transportation as a service is coming. Transportation as a service, yes. And what this means is um, in the future, you could have a vehicle like that, a bunch of them driving around town. You go out and you use your cell phone, say, I want a cab. Thing comes and picks you up, you know. Uh, and then you, it goes away when you're finished with it. Yeah, absolutely. And you, it means that you don't have to – you pay for the vehicle – probably, but you don't have to pay for your own vehicle. And as a person who has lived without a car, I can tell you it makes a difference when you don't have to pay for a car. It makes living a lot easier. <laughs> for some people, it makes it possible where having a car makes living impossible. Okay, I'm going to go on, Tom. We're up to Friday, January 22nd. We have an offshore wind farm, and this comes from a company called Ming Yang, which I had not been aware of before, and the article is from Renews. Hmm. Hmm. I, I don't seem to have any notes on this one. Well, maybe there aren't any notes to be had. Uh, re, do you have the title? China adds 72 gigawatts of wind in 2020. <laughs> well, what do I always say about gigawatts? <laughs> you say they're bigawatts. 20, 72 gigawatts is, I'm going to say, probably about 35 times as much uh, electric power that you would get out of that than we used to get from the Vermont Yankee nuclear power plant. And that's just one company, one country, rather, one year. So, you know, this is a lot. China added just under 72 gigawatts of wind power capacity in 2020. 
nearly tripling the amount of capacity added in 2019. That's significant, too. According to data from the National Energy Administration, installed capacity of solar power rose by 20, 48.2 uh, gigawatts, returning that sector to growth after two years of lost momentum. And returning that to growth means the amount that's installed over the course of the year is increasing from what it was uh, the last year. Yeah. The capability. Yep. Okay, I think we should probably so a quick, go... A quick takeaway that they didn't mention. Yeah. Hydropower was up by 13 gigawatts. Ah, Tom, you fibbed. You did have notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, should I go on? Yeah, let's move on. We let's, got a little bus here. Let's, whoops, there we go. A D, BYD electric bus. Here is an item from Clean Technica. BYD, build your dreams. We'll sell 1,002 more electric buses to Bogota, Colombia. Why this that extra is, two? What? Why, Why the extra, extra two? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe they... I, I have idea. Okay. I'm going to read what this says. It says, re, we recently reported a stunning 470 BYD electric buses were headed to Bogota, Colombia. What it was apparent that was apparently the warm up act. BYD has now been selected to provide the city with 1,002 more electric buses. This comes from winning an open tender the city put out. So these books, these buses were, were, low bid. they, they were um, the low bid at auction. And the, one of the things about this is these are good buses, these are nice buses. Well, nice to me. They have they have things like uh, cell phone uh, 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 cell phone chargers in them, so passengers can charge their cell phones while they're riding. And this is significant because it means that the total amount of buses on order by Bogota, Colombia, is fourteen hundred and seventy two. That was an order I think in November. It might have been December, and then another one in January when. Bloomberg NEF did an inventory of American electric buses last year. They fi found 650 in the United States. We're so missing the boat, baby. Bogota, Colombia has got more electric buses on order, that one city in South America, than there are in the entire United States. What's going on? Well, the Chinese are building over a, over a thousand electric buses a year, a hundred thousand rather. The Americans are building about a hundred. That's what's you know. going on. And <laughs> why, why is that? The, the electric buses built in China were practically non-existent when Donald Trump took office. Four years later, there's, there's the buses that they're selling. Half the buses in the world are, are, that are new being purchased are electric. Well, this and, is, well, it makes a lot of sense. It does. Yeah, absolutely it does. These buses are more expensive than um, fossil fuel buses, but they only cost about 20% as much to run. That's and, the kicker right there. That's the kicker. That, that's and you, the economics, stupid. That's, that's right. You got it, Tom. So do you have more on that? Yeah, this is the largest order for electric buses that any company has gotten anywhere outside of China. Yeah, and the outside of China part, the city of Shenzhen has 16,500 electric buses. By the way, I saw a picture of Shenzhen. It's Did not you? a sleepy little village. It's got no. skyscrapers. It's a big town. Well, with 16,000 buses, you'd, ha you'd expect it would have to be a big town. It's, by the way, for anybody who doesn't know, this, it is just north of Hong Kong. Okay, should I go on? Well, as a quick, this is interesting because bus body parts will be built and assembled within Colombia with local bus manufacturing partners. There you go. See, so the parts, the, 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 the main bus is coming from China, but the body parts like the seats and stuff like that are, are, are being produced locally. That's what's called a plus plus. Yep. Okay. okay. All set? Yeah, we got a picture of a forest coming up here. We do. This is a forest, believe it or not. 
else from Antarctica? Forests absorb twice as much carbon as they emit. Research published in Nature Climate Change found that the world's forests sequestered about twice as much carbon dioxide as they emitted in, in years 2001 through 2019. In other words, they provide a carbon sink that absorbs about 1.5 times as much carbon dioxide as the United States emits. These trees in forests take down a lot of carbon dioxide, and that's just forests, by the way. That doesn't count, um, you know, uh, wetlands and... Wetlands and shorelines and stuff Yeah, like that. wetlands pr draw down a lot of carbon dioxide. Well, okay. This, this article has some interesting maps and charts yeah. on net greenhouse gas flow yeah. from forests, and they're worth looking at. Yeah, that's that's right. And this picture, by the way, is not at the article. I, I found this on Unsplash, um, which is, you know, if what I do. You've when, seen one forest, you've seen them all. <laughs> I have never seen a forest that looked like that. <laughs> Really, you know, I've spent a fair amount of my life in forests and never one that looked like that. Everything is too covered with moss and stuff. Anyway. There's another, another takeaway that I'll mention. Yeah. Protecting the remaining tropical forest is critical to mitigating climate change. Absolutely it is. And we're seeing these forests like in the, in the uh, Amazon and in, in, in Indonesia and so forth being burned down. And then on top of that, we're not intentionally burning down forests in the United States, but by golly, they're burning down. And one of the things Joe Biden mentioned last night was that the area burned down in the United States last year in wildfires is approximately equal to the to the size of the state of New Jersey. Wow. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Anyway, don't despair. There are things we can do about this. We are up to Saturday, January 23rd. You got a nice we, picture of the Capitol. We have a picture of the Capitol, and I don't generally go. I try to have pictures that are broad enough that, you you know, they fill a screen side to side. This one in order to get it, I couldn't crop the bottom because I would have cropped off all those flags. So I, I left it more or less the way it is. And that is the, that's a White House photograph of the Capitol. And here is a, a, uh, an article from the National Audubon Society. Biden revs the executive branch's climate engine after four lost years. Yeah. President Joe Biden gave an inaugural address that outlined the country, country's many challenges he must face as the leader of the executive branch. The bulk of the speech carried a, a demand for unity and truth as we tackle the what is called the, quote, cascading crises of our era, end quote. And well, you listen the crises, and I think you'll agree with them. Yeah. Climate, the pandemic. Yep. Systemic racism and yes. the white supremacist movement. And the what? White supremacist movement. Yeah, I, I would, I would go broader than just white supremacist and and make it. Um, well, it's part of systemic racism. Well, yeah, but it's also there's a there's a a movement um, toward um, uh, conspiracy theories. And, you know, I tell people I have a conspiracy theory. My conspiracy theory is that uh, somebody's out there making up conspiracy theories. And <laughs> I, I, I think that's true. I think that there are people in this world who are operating for pay. And I think I know who's paying some of them. Or, or you know, I th my guess is that Vladimir Putin is involved in this. But I, I think that there is a, a an intentional... Um, uh, conspiracy to undermine the United States, uh, its its security, its its presence in the world, its authority, and so forth, by producing divisions in our among our people. And these conspiracy theories are a really convenient way to do it. And unfortunately for the world and for humanity, um, it's pretty easy to convince a large number of people that 
they should do things that are just, if they were thinking about it rationally, they'd realize that's not what they want to do. I think the over, probably the overwhelming majority of the people who went into the Capitol building knew that they were doing something, would have known if that they were doing something wrong if they hadn't been exposed to so many conspiracy theories. And I don't think it's just Republicans who are susceptible to this. I think everybody is, you know. Well, there's a difference between conspiracies and conspiracy theories. That's true. And the theories, some of the theories are pretty flaky. But let's some of them are pre- Yeah, let's some say, of them. There's been, there's been conspiracies as long as there's been people. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I would bet that there's been conspiracies since before there were people. How do three people keep a secret? They don't. Two of them have to be dead. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Tom. Okay, I'm going to get away from that. We have a we how do you whoops, there Okay, sorry about that. I'm trying to do that with a mouse scroll button. I should be doing it with a key. Um, we have a picture of Elon Musk and an item from Clean Technica. Got any idea why he's dressed like that? I think, you know, I, I put in this caption, which I made up, Elon Musk being himself. And yeah. I think it's just, you know, he felt like being a, I, he felt like doing something weird. <laughs> Well, so, he does his own thing, that's for sure. He, he, he does his own thing. You got a title for this article? Elon Musk contributing $100 million to discover carbon capture technology that works. Yes, and he didn't say what you had to do to convince him what the carbon technology uh, working, that, that your carbon technology actually does work so he's he's putting together the rules on how to do that but that's being introduced introduced separately okay well, it one says, of the things i think he said is turning carbon into rocks and burying them is not the way to go yes we had been relegating carbon capture to charlatans and sorcerers this is the editorial people at clean technica but now elon musk the wealthiest man in the known universe says he's donating a hundred million dollars as a prize for whoever can come up with the best carbon capture technology elon musk likes to make bets that's why he he made that bet that he could put up a 100 megawatt battery in south australia in a hundred days so they wouldn't have to have to pay for it here he won yeah he won he got paid for it um, here, I think that what he's going to do is he's going to say, okay, here's some reasonable um, goals that have to be met in carbon capture. And then he's going to put those goals out and it's, it's going to be, okay, nothing out there does them. I got a so, quick takeaway about yeah, that. Yeah, go ahead. Carbon capture and utilization takes the carbon dioxide and uses it as a feedstock for low carbon fuels, fertilizers, and industrial chemicals. Yes. So and that, far, no one has really come up with technologies that work. And here's the here's the kicker. But don't bet against Elon Musk. Yes. Um, one of the things, just as an, an example of why this is a problem, one of the things that they've talked about is capturing the carbon dioxide coming out of uh, gas powered. Uh, power plants or coal-powered power plants, capturing it, <clears throat> putting it in, um, dissolving it in in uh, water, and, or not dissolving it in water, pumping it into bags that are on the bottom of the ocean. That's and, not the way to go. Huh? It's not the way to go. Well, the, the idea here is carbon dioxide uh, liquefies under not very man, much pressure. It's about six atmospheres. And you, if you do that, it means you're going to have liquid carbon dioxide down there. Uh, there's one minor problem I see with that, which is, you know, you have some crab come along and, and uh, take a nip at your, at your bag, and you could be leaking liquid carbon dioxide into the ocean water. That's not good. This is a bad idea, but it's the kind of, it's the quality of the idea that I, that I'm seeing coming up. You got more? Well, I was just going to say that it's key to utilize that carbon that you've captured, not just bury it in the earth. Yes, that's right. Okay. Our next item has a picture of Mount Fuji and 
uh, cherry blossoms in the foreground. Isn't that refreshing looking? Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, isn't it? This is from the Japan Times. As climate change push grows, Japanese firms accelerate shift to renewable energy. With, a, with Japan announcing a goal to become carbon neutral by 2050 and the U.S. getting back into the Paris Agreement, the momentum toward curtailing climate change is growing. The Japanese businesses are pushing plans to switch to renewables. I think it's interesting that Joe Biden's um, promise that he was going to bring the United States back into the Paris Climate Accord had Japanese businesses increasing the speed of their switch to renewables. I think that's exactly right. Yeah. This, the article says that major companies are shifting their energy sources to renewables as the need to be environmentally friendly is increasingly becoming a key factor. Yeah, this is, and that's another thing too. You keep saying it's the economy. When we, when we look at these things, it's not just that um, renewable energy is cheaper, which it is. It's also that renewable energy is required in order to address climate change. And if we don't get climate change under control, these big companies are gonna stop making money. It's just that simple. You can't make you can't make money in a in a factory that's been wiped out by a typhoon, you know. So there is that. More, Tom? No, we got a picture coming up of an ancient building. We do. I thought this was really interesting. It's this pretty building, neat. huh? That's pretty neat, that's isn't it? Th that building was built in about the year six sixty, and that's wow. you know. So Jackson this is church prays for deliverance from a nuclear plant. <laughs> oh, the people who built this church had no idea. The Jackson built it. That's yeah. The, uh, and the, the grade one listed church, St. Peter on the wall. It's called St. Peter on the wall because it was built on a wall of a Roman fort. And the, the wall of the Roman fort is now um, not visible. Uh, I don't know why. It was built on in an abandoned Roman fort in about the year 660. So this thing is, um, is uh, what, 1,360 uh, years old. Now the Bradwell B nuclear reactor is, is to be built threateningly close by. Members of the con congregation question why nuclear power is needed when renewables are cheaper. And they're actually also questioning whether the church will be able to continue functioning as a church with a nuclear plant so close. Well, and, why, why nuclear power is needed? Is, the answer is very simple. Profits. Well, I, you know, that's it's short term profits. I, I cannot imagine a conventional nuclear power plant making profits in the long term today. I and think it's right. Yeah, and it's not even profits for the utility that orders it. I think it's going to be profits for the people who build it and possibly for the banks i don't know but it it the the picture for nuclear is look is looking significantly less uh friendly as the years go by because the prices for nuclear are going up going the prices, up prices and it's only going upwards yeah and the prices for renewables are going down and it's you know and they got more to go yeah i saw a thing today there was a i think it was today a uh that that huge solar array in in the northern territories in australia 10 gigawatt solar array yeah they signed an, an agreement to build, build build that with the with the territorial government that's going to have 30 gigawatts of battery backup wow that's yeah significant. and they're talking about using it to supply 20 percent of this of the of the electricity for singapore I was I mean, just going to say, aren't they going to export some of it? Yeah, they're, it's, it's basically all for export. Do you have more on this little church? Say again? Do you have more on the little church? Uh, I, I'm going to guess that you don't. <laughs> okay. Well, it just says the government could invest more in more electricity storage for renewables. There's yes. already two wind farms in that town. Yeah, okay. Um, our next item is from a magazine called Foreign Policy, 
We have a picture of a solar array in Japan. That looks very much like the solar array in Brattleboro. Yes, but, you know, I'm kind of disturbed by that array because the panels are in, sh in the shade of trees. And I just, I think the trees are too close to it. Anyway, they well, might have micro inverters. Yeah, huh? for sure. A few of them are, but most of them are, aren't. You? Yeah, I was, I was going to say they might have micro inverters on some of the panels so that they can cut themselves off independently. Um, what do you have for a title? Our amazing clean energy future has arrived. Yes, there you go. Evidence Drum roll, of clean. Huh? Drum, Drum roll, roll, right. <laughs> Evidence of a great green wave is now overwhelming. In 2020, the world spent half a trillion dollars on renewables and clean technology, according to Bloomberg NEF. The prices are going down and they will continue to fall with the economics of scale. So the rate of renewable energy adoption will only increase. Well, this is from the article. It's a quick sentence, two sentences. The yeah. 2020s will be the decade in which the planet finally closes the chapter on destruction and pollution by fossil fuels. Yep. And enters a new realm of clean and nearly free energy. Yep. The end state of the price decline will be energy so cheap that its major cost will be that of transmitting it over wires. You know, I find that hard to believe because the, the, the technology of wire transmission is getting better. But anyway, we have to go on. There's a picture of a scientific survey launch, which is a NOAA picture and an article from Forbes. Three reasons scientists are optimistic under President Biden. During the Trump administration, there was a great feeling, a general feeling that science was under attack. Whether climate science, COVID-19 or the environment, a fog hung, hung over the science community. And it was more than those, by the way. Um, there, now there seems to be new optimism with the inauguration of President Biden. Well, that, there is a takeaway here. Yeah. The restoration of science is the most immediate reason for optimism. Yes. And, you know, this, it, it, it just it, it boggles my mind to think that people would reject science for as a as a tool for developing policy but they have and what what is their alternative it's wishful thinking really that's basically all it is so well it's a search for profits immediate profits yeah and you also got to figure that the people who own the, the fossil fuels are staring in face with stranded assets uh, stranded assets, and when they add up the figures on the stranded assets, they sound like they're worth a lot, but that doesn't mean they're worth a lot. Okay, our next item is from Reuters, and we have a picture of a an offshore drilling rig, and what do you got, Tom? BP oil exploration team swept aside in the climate revolution. This, this is some evidence that BP is getting their act together. Yeah. The geologists, engineers, and scientists of BP's oil exploration team have to be have to have been cut to no less to less than one hundred from a peak of more than seven hundred a few years ago. The company told Reuters the job cuts are part of a climate change driven overhaul. <coughs> Excuse me. Consider yourself excused. Thank you. Uh, that was triggered last year by CEO Bernard Looney. <laughs> I wonder if he gets teased about his name. <laughs> How could he not? Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine having a guy in my fraternity in college named Looney. <laughs> well, I had an uncle, an uncle whose name was, his last name was Dovey. Until yeah. he got into the Navy, and then it turned out that it was Dovey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this well, the X is a, is a sign from the inside of BP. Yeah. Of a shift away from oil and gas and toward renewables. Yes. So there you have it. Okay. We have a picture of wind turbines in Italy. I there it is. I just wanted to finish a, a, a Oh, go ahead, Tom. There's a lot, of, a lot of graphs in that article. 
Yeah. And they indicate that BP no longer considers many of its oil and gas reserves worth developing. That's yeah. a significant uh, uh, se sentence right there. Absolutely. And, you know, yesterday when when President Biden um, said they would not be permitting um, new leasing on federal land, some of the people in the oil industry got very upset. And some people would say, why would we have to worry? We've got thousands of, of uh, leases on sites that are still undevel undeveloped. No. Good point. Okay. Now we can go. Nice picture coming up. Of wind turbines. Um, in Italy, and this is from CNN. Renewable energy surpassed fossil fuels for European electricity in 2020. Europeans got more of their electricity from renewable sources than fossil fuels for the first time last year, according to an, an annual report from Ember and Agora Energy Venda. It, it found that 38% of the electricity generated by renewables was generated by renewables last year and 37% by fossil fuels. So, Well, the takeaway here is wind and solar whoops. sources have doubled since 2015. Yeah. While coal has been declining to 13%. Coal at 13%. And, you know, the same thing is happening all over the world. It's happening in the United States. People. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, just, this is just about Europe, but that's true what you say. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have an item now. There it is. I want, to, I want to draw your attention to the fact that about three quarters of the way from left to right and about halfway up in that photograph in that photograph is a round red dot, big, yes, with a with a dark red dot in the middle of it, and that marks the location of the of the offshore of the offshore oil rig that we're talking about. And this is article is from Clean Technica. Oh, okay. <clears throat> with a Google Maps 3D view of the SpaceX rig, yeah, which is the thing you just described as being marked in red. That's right. <clears throat> what do you got for a title for the article? Reader tip and pictures of SpaceX, Pho SpaceX Phobos, which is the second SpaceX oil rig. Yeah. Um, Clean Technica has covered the SpaceX purchase of two offshore oil rigs. This is Elon Musk's company, SpaceX, which I think is the first company to be commercially putting um, American satellites into space. Uh, it's, it has plans to modify them into floating launch and landing facilities for Starship, which is a program it's got. And we have tracking progress from, of track, bin tracking progress from the rigs. Thanks to readers, we now have pictures of the one called Phobos. And that, that thing that's there that's marked with that uh, dot is a is an offshore oil rig that's been trans um, uh, has been changed, and you can see that it's on big tall uh, floats that are painted red at the top of them, and are they look like to my eyes like they're kind of pink at the bottom. Well, I think that's the red and pink line is where they're going to eventually settle when they get to their location. That's what I think. They I think these things. Yeah, they tow them out and then they they add uh, ballast into them, which is usually just seawater going it's into water. tanks. Yep. Yeah. Well, and I was trying to figure out what was going on here, and I think <clears> I got <throat> it figured out. SpaceX, which is Musk co Company, plans to launch and land starships at many locations around the world. Right. Taking people from large cities to other large cities in under 30 minutes. This guy's way ahead of everybody else. <laughs> He's got an imagination. I got to tell you that. But, you know, he he wants to have these things away from cities, I think. Yeah. And uh, he wants, you know, or, or in anybody else and putting them on on um, obsolete uh, oil rigs is makes them a lot safer in terms of how how they are for you don't want to have a rocket ship drop into the middle of Dallas. Okay. I don't think so. And, gonna, and he, he's 
probably buying these things on a nickel on a dollar. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's thousands of them that oil companies are trying to get rid of them. They don't know what to do with them. Okay, our next item. There it is. <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> I, I, I got to tell you, I, I looked at this article and I thought, should we include that? We have to include that. This is from Renews. That full invest in in turbine toilets. <laughs> Okay, Vattenfall has placed an order for offshore wind industry's first in-turbine toilet. The we, Swedish developer is spending more than a few pennies installing the cubicles in every turbine in its Aberdeen offshore wind farm. The toilets are being installed for reasons of both safety and productivity. You know, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> well, Those people... Most part, these turbines are unmanned. Yeah. But there are people that would have to go visit them and, you know, make maintenance and stuff like that. And it takes hours to do that. If, if they want to, to go to the bathroom, they got to climb down a ladder to a ship. Yeah. And they have to go out to the ship, which is also um, a, a it's a safety issue. So Absolutely. There it is. Tom, uh, Tom, we have to we have to keep going. So, do you have more about that? Well, it's just that the, the unit comes with its own water and power supply and takes no resources from the turbine. There you go. There you go. Okay, our next item has another, to do... Another picture of what we were just looking at. Yeah, a wind, a wind turbine. Um, and this is from the Fall River, Fall River Herald News, and it's about Vineyard Wind, which is close to New England. Oh, sure it is. Yeah, it's, 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 I guess you could say it's in New England. It is. It's um, Vineyard Wind looks to regain spot in the project pipeline. Yeah, with a new federal administration that's expected to be far more receptive to offshore wind turbine uh, wind projects. Vineyard Wind said it is ready to resubmit plans for a wind farm 15 miles south of Martha's Vineyard that it yanked from federal review in early December. We, I remember we had this, this article in early December. It. Yeah. And by the way, 15 miles from Martha's Vineyard, you'll be able to see those wind turbines eh, through binoculars, maybe. But a lot of the time you They're won't even be able to be see that. disturbing your vision. No, they will not be disturbing your vision, no. Okay. Well, the reason for this was because the Trump administration had imposed a string of permitting delays on a project. So Vineyard Wind just got tired and said, "We're, you know, we're not going to argue with you anymore." Yeah, and and they they saw that there was a, a deadline coming up, a, a something was going to happen, and they didn't feel like having to fool with the nonsense that was going to be thrown at them. Well, it okay. looks like it's going to happen, but it's going to be a year, year later than they originally planned. Right. Okay, we're up to Wednesday, January twenty seventh, and I. You know, this was about um, nature. And a nice I, picture of a spider web. It is. And, you know, it's unlike anything that we've had up before. It has not a lot to do with energy, except that it does have a lot to do with nature. So instead of looking for photographs of wind turbines and so forth, I said, ah, I'm going to go to Unsplash and just see what they have for nature. And this, I think, might actually have been the first photograph that came up. But it was early on. And I just said, that's unusual. I like that. Okay. Accounting so, for the value of nature reinforces the Paris climate targets. Yes. This is from Yale Carbon uh, Climate, Yale Climate Connections, if I didn't say that before. The key finding of a study of climate economic models is that they have been underestimating the cost of, cli of climate change damages to society by a factor of more than five. Um, the study by researchers at UC Davis was published in the journal Nature Sustainability. And, you know, if you think about it, if we're going to ha have a, a system in which everything is monetized and as, as it has been in the last few decades, 
that means that your college education is worth a certain amount of money. There's a certain amount of money that is applied if somebody dies. You know, there's a price of life. Yeah, I've, I've seen that kind of analysis. Yes. And and how much money is a painting worth? Well, whatever it can get when it goes to market. And how much money is beauty worth or love? Say what? Beauty or love? What? How much money is love worth? Uh, In the, Huh? Different, different folks have different ideas, I guess. I suppose, and and uh, a lot of it depends upon what you're talking about. Um, in terms of, do do you love your fellow man? Do you love your child, or um, your dog, or your dog? Yeah, absolutely. And how, what kind of money are you going to put on that as a price? Well, that's uh, what they're talking about when they talk about social cost. Well, that's part of it. Another part of it is absolutely monetizable, which is what does it cost when somebody gets uh, emphysema or something because they're too, uh, close to a coal burning power plant? Well, anyway, those, those numbers are quite accurate. Yeah, those numbers are pretty accurate. We should. Do you have more on this? Well, yeah. On Inauguration Day, President Biden established a new interagency working group to reevaluate the social cost of all greenhouse yes. gases. That's what this is all about. Absolutely. So there you have it. Okay, we are... Um, We're moving on. Moving on. We have a picture here of wind turbines. Is that what that is? I think it is, yeah. There it is. Germany and, adds 1.4 gigawatts of onshore on, on wind power capacity. Yep. Um, Germany has installed 1,431 megawatts of additional onshore wind capacity in 2020, comprising 420 turbines, according to associations BWE and VDMA power systems. The figures for 2020 represent an increase of 46% from 2019 about 339 megawatts of that incre of that capacity that was installed is um, from repowering systems, which means that upgrading. They're upgrading. They're coming in. They're taking the turbine down, which means that they're taking down the the blades, the whole thing, and putting a new one up. Well, this 1.4 gigawatt figure falls far short. What's, what's, going on? what's going on here? What's going on? No, a lot of noise. Well, I'm sorry. I was coughing. Oh. <laughs> so, and I was, I was trying to get my microphone out of the way so I wouldn't bother people. Oh, okay. Well, let me say this again. The 1.4 gigawatt figure falls far short of the target adopted by the end of 2020. Yeah which envisions an expansion target of 71 gigawatts of onshore wind energy by 2030. Right. They're going to have to increase the speed in which they're installing these wind turbines. There's just they no need, two ways. They're talking it. about 1.4 gigawatts. They need permits for five or six gigawatts a year. Yes. And, you know, I, one of the things about this, you think about land use and wind turbines, the land under those wind turbines is in agricultural use. The wind turbines use very little land. Very and little land. That, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah. you see some pictures and of the farmer's fields with the wind turbines hitting in the middle of them. And I think of that open pit mine that was started since we started this show. This is relatively new. There was an open pit mine started that was planned to be five times the size of the island of Manhattan. And this is in Germany. You know, this is not a place where nobody lives. Um, and they were moving villages out. And in some cases, there were villages with buildings dating back to the Middle Ages. And to make way for... Um, uh, a hole in the ground so they could so they could burn coal well it doesn't make sense anymore no Thanks. it doesn't <laughs> thankfully it doesn't okay our last another article nice, another nice picture here of a nodding donkey a nodding donkey um let's get that up there we go the nodding donkey or pump jack and here is an article from cnn Biden 
to halt new oil and gas leases on federal lands. Yeah, President. Oh. Huh? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> President Joe Biden is set to order a moratorium on all new oil and gas leases on federal lands. A person familiar with this plan said. The move is expected to be the most prominent in a series of climate actions he will take today. Today being um, Wednesday, yesterday, uh, and this was what I what I mentioned at the beginning of the show. This is one of the things that he did. But he did so many things in those. It was just two orders, but there were so many things included. It was absolutely. Amazing. The move is expected to be the most prominent in a series of climate actions you take today, including uh, elevating the climate crisis as a national security issue. And what he said is it's an existential problem. Um, and I think he's right. We're at a point here where if we don't deal with the climate crisis, uh, we're not going to exist anymore as a society. You said it better. What's Yeah. As a society, we're uh, vulnerable. As a species, we're even vulnerable. Um, well, we got to watch this guy. The president has moved swiftly to take action on climate. Yeah. Taking office last week, including rejoining the Paris Climate Accord, canceling the Climate XL pipeline, and directing agencies to review and reverse more than 100 actions taken by the Trump administration. Well, you know, one of the things that happened under the Trump administration, and this is, this is something that makes sense when you think about it. Uh, there was an attorney or a lawyer who was, who was looking at um, some of the actions of the Trump administration and said, these are going to be fairly easy to un undo because they were done in a fashion that was extremely sloppy. And, you know, when you think about Donald Trump and his people going to going to um, court, uh, trying to get the votes changed and being turned down in 60 out of 60 cases, you kind of understand what sloppy uh, work is all about. And in rejecting science, they're doing things that are extremely sloppy. And, um, you know, which is why the Trump administration was under a court order to reduce carbon dioxide and they never did it. You know, they just ignored the court. Yeah. And judges don't tend to like that very much. <laughs> no, I don't think they do. But, you know, his his some of his suits went to the Supreme Court and they didn't decide in his favor. And, you know, I well, think, you know, I don't think this guy Trump actually believes he lost the election. Oh, I, I'm quite sure that he doesn't. But, you know, that's because he believes what he wants to believe. Oh, sure. You know, there's a lot of people who do that. Anyway. Well, I think uh, that uh, Biden's that, got his work cut out for him, but I think he's up to the deal. Well, you know, I had a thought and and you know, I'm I'm I have told people I'm not uh, thrilled with Joe Biden. And it's because I always thought of him as being kind of a. Um, wishy-washy and I'm not sure that I was right about that and I'm beginning to suspect that I was not but nevertheless um, I had this thought that I would never have expected Joe Biden to be a great president but I think Donald Trump has set him up to be one <laughs> that's a good that's a good observation I think, okay I think Tom it's true I think it is. It's time to go. Well, this so, has been a good show. We had some good stuff on today. <laughs> we had some fun today. I think we should wave everybody goodbye. Everybody, you can see me waving in your mind's eye, I'm sure. And, and you just Tom have is to going, imagine me waving. I am waving. Yes. I, yes. And so we hope to have you uh, on board with us next week when we do our 404th show. And in the meantime, have a good week. And as a matter of fact, I should put the slide up. It says, have a perfectly lovely week. Sorry for my, my uh, dodgy handling of these slides. Have a good week. Have a perfectly lovely week. And you too, Tom, have a nice week. I'll try. Yep. Bye. Adios.